Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Arthritis Action Podcast. I'm Mark, your host, and for this episode, I'm joined by Dan Robaledo and Helena Dickin from South Coast RX Physiotherapy in Portsmouth. Dan is a chartered physiotherapist and the director of South Coast RX Physiotherapy, and Helena, also a chartered physiotherapist, is the clinical Pilates team leader there. So hi, guys. Uh, lovely to have you join me today. Hi, Mark. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to having a talk about physiotherapy and Pilates. Excellent. Great stuff. So, I mean, we've talked previously on the podcast about various other therapies, but like, as you say, like today, we're going to talk about physiotherapy and Pilates as that I know can be incredibly beneficial for people living with arthritis. So eager to learn a bit more about it. Uh, so Dan, I've said a little bit about you already, but could you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so my name's Dan. I'm one of the co-founders of South Coast RX Physiotherapy. Uh, we are a private um, physiotherapy clinic located in Portsmouth. Uh, we've got a team of physios, all with an extensive background working in the NHS um, and also in, in sport as well. Um, which, which, like, we're really proud of um, all the experience that our team has. Um, our main kind of like goal when working with with patients uh, and clients is to keep them doing the things that they love. Um, it's very much an active rehabilitation approach, um, and we'll go through that today. Our, a lot of our background is in, in exercise rehabilitation, and that's what we're going to kind of like discuss today: the benefits of physio and Pilates. Um, in that sense. Excellent. Thank you. And Helena, same question to you, if you could tell us a little bit more about your work there. Um, so, hi everyone, I'm Helena. I am a clinical Pilates lead at the clinic. So I work as a musculoskeletal physiotherapist, um, but also I run a clinical Pilates class uh, once a week down here um, at the Bradley Centre in Portsmouth. So I integrate a lot of Pilates into my normal musculoskeletal clinic because I find it useful for a myriad of conditions, especially people living with arthritis. So I end up interweaving it in my normal normal um, clinic work anyway um, and yes we do the we do the class every week so I have a lot of um, patients who come with chronic pain or um, living with long-term conditions who find it really useful to integrate sort of more low impact exercise into their rehab routine so that's that's the way I like to work um, and yeah I'm looking forward to explaining a bit more about it with you guys today. Excellent thank you very much. So I'm going to start with some really very sort of might seem a little too basic, but let's start off like real simple and we'll build up from them. What is physiotherapy? You can answer this as a textbook, like a physiotherapy. It's, it's someone who's, who looks at your movement um, and it looks to restore function, um, reduce pain and, and kind of optimize your, your well-being. And like that, that is, that, I guess that's a textbook definition, but it's, we do so much more than that. So if I kind of like what we do with when patients come in or clients come in, first of all, there's a one-to-one -one assessment. Uh, we sit down and we're talking about like what your symptoms are, what's your injury or, or, or illness that's, that's affecting you physically. Um, and then from that, the physiotherapist will, will diagnose uh, the root cause of your symptoms. So exactly maybe what, what's causing um, your pain and then create with you a, a roadmap to recovery. And on that, which we'll discuss, there can be different kind of modalities that the physio uses, exercise and education being probably the most powerful and the biggest ones. Um, but there's lots of different things that we can do essentially to optimize how you're moving, reduce your pain uh, and make, make you feel better. So I guess that's what a physio does. We're looking at your movement, we're trying to improve your health um, and trying to make you live a better life. We're very goals based in physiotherapy. We like to know what you would like to be able to achieve and sometimes that seems like it's uh, very far in the future or near on impossible but we like to chop that into little bite-sized chunks and work into short-term goals um, to improve your strength or flexibility or reduce your pain just bit by bit by bit and suddenly those long-term goals that seem so far in the future they get a little bit more achievable so we're quite person and patient centered in physiotherapy and people find it quite empowering sometimes uh, we like to give people you know the empowerment over their condition and then and then collaborate with them and work with them from there really a little bit more we're, we're kind of experts in anatomy and, and, and physiology and in that sense just working with the person who's struggling um to kind of build strength and and, and get back doing doing everything that they love to do 
Great stuff. Hopefully that will make sense to some people who didn't know what exactly what it was already. Because I know there are loads of different types. Like, you know, what what's the difference between like, you know, a physio and an osteopath and all this type of stuff. I know that the waters can get quite muddy sometimes for people, I think. So it's nice to have a good, thorough explanation. Which leads me on to my next question, which is, what is Pilates? Um, so, yes, what is Pilates? So if you've never done Pilates before, um, Pilates was originally developed by a chap called Joseph Pilates in the 1900s. Um, and he was a personal trainer and he designed like 50 exercises um, to improve the flexibility and strength of an individual. And that sort of type of Pilates is often called classical Pilates now. Um, and that's not practiced uh, that much anymore. If you go on YouTube and you look at Joseph Pilates, some of the the movements are quite ballistic and they're quite um, they're quite dramatic actually. And I, I probably wouldn't like to practice them myself. So that's the origins of Pilates. Um, but what it is now really is is a nice low impact exercise technique um, that focuses on strength of your your arms and your legs um, and also your core. Um, we, we focus a lot on core strength. Um, we do a lot of balance work and coordination work. Um, and we also work on the flexibility and the mobility of your joints. Um, we normally work on a mat, so there's a lot of mat work involved. So you might have a little bit of a warm up in standing, and then you might come onto the mat um, and do a lot of exercises lying on your back or lying on your side, um, being on your hands and knees, um, kneeling, for example. There's lots of different positions that we do strengthening exercises or stretches in. Um, and then uh, it's often integrated with a bit of like equipment, small equipment sometimes. So we might use small weights or resistance bands or something called a Pilates ring, which is a, a resistance ring that you can use to resist inwards and outwards movements, if anyone's come across it before. Um, and it's, it's a bit of a classically a bit slower and a bit more controlled um, than maybe your, your circuit classes or your hit classes. And really focused on technique um, and and building the smaller muscles in the body to give stability and uh, and strength around joints. How does it differ from yoga? Because I know they're quite often kind of lumped into the same pool, really, aren't they? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. So um, I wish I practiced more yoga because yoga is a fantastic uh, exercise, but I'm not very flexible. And what tends to happen is the flexible people do yoga, <laughs> which they should do. And uh, and people who aren't so flexible do Pilates. The difference between them really is that if I speak about yoga, I'm certainly not an expert in yoga. I'm not a yoga instructor. But um, what you'll find when you go to a yoga class is it's uh, very much more focused on flexibility and poses. So you might do a flow of yoga um, and they've got different names for different flows. And it will be very much focused on static postures and flexibility. There might be an element of um, breathing work in yoga. There might be an element of mindfulness work in yoga. Um, and there's there's this part of yoga which is far more spiritual, I think, than than what we do in Pilates. Um, they might do different flows or practices uh, according to what season they're in. And they might do different flows and practices depending on what they want to take from the practice today, like if you're feeling powerful or if you want to relax. Or They always have a purpose for their exercise, which is a really, really nice idea. Um, but you'll find that it's, um, it's a lot, uh, quite a lot of balance holding the moves and holding the poses. Um, and it's like it's like almost like a lifestyle yoga. It's a way that you choose to live your life. I'm the opposite to you. I do more yoga and should do more Pilates. So I, I, I do need to do more of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we should probably do a bit of both, to be honest, all of us. Yeah, I think you're right that, you know, doing a bit of everything really can be quite beneficial when it comes to exercise. I mean, the more variety you can have in it depending on what your body needs and what it's able to do and what it requires. Absolutely. So I think Pilates, when you come to a Pilates class, it might feel a little bit more like um, your classic exercise. We do numbers of reps, for example, and numbers of and, and numbers of sets. Um, so we might get into a position and perform an, a number of a certain exercise. Um, so it's less of a flow and sort of less spiritual, especially when you come to clinical Pilates, it's a bit more clinical. Um, and you, you're, so you'll change 
positions and you'll do exercises in those positions, it might have a little bit more pace to it. So depending on what you're trying to train, whether you're training sort of strength or endurance, we might do quicker movements and then slower movements. So there might be a little bit more of varying pace rather than yoga is is relatively slow, flows uh, most of the time. Um, And you might find that um, it's broadly more strength based um then yoga is probably a little bit more flexibility based um but that's the difference between yoga and pilates but then when we think about pilates and clinical pilates mm. um if you come to a physio led class you're going to have more of a, a smaller group more of an individualized um experience so your physiotherapist should be able to tailor the exercise depending on what you're able to achieve and they should have assessed you before for that um you know if you can't deal with one position they can they can help you to get into a different position and then they can regress or progress according to how you're feeling on the day really Brilliant. Yeah, I think that's one thing that's really important to note as well is that I know some people get a little scared if they see any like marketing pictures or anything like that of anything. Like, oh, well, I can't get down on my knees, so I can't do it. Like there are yeah. adjustments and other versions of the each pose or different whatever sort of position you're in that you could do to get the same effect. Yeah, I think it's worth knowing that a lot of my clients are coming to clinical Pilates don't think that they can get into the positions needed to do Pilates. Well, I'm equipped for if they can't, and that's absolutely fine. But what I find is people, my patients with chronic pain and my patients with quite significant joint pain, they always surprise themselves. You know, just because they haven't been on their hands and knees for years doesn't mean that they're not able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I expect, I go into class thinking that, oh, I'll I'll get a chair for them or a a gym ball for them to sit on. But no, they always want to keep up with, with the class and they always surprise themselves. Excellent. That's great to hear. Great to hear. So now that we know what both of these things are, how can they work together to help people with arthritis? Well, I think in a sense, it's building upon what Helena was talking about with the clinical Pilates, because that's Pilates led by a physiotherapist. Mm. Um, So in that particular class, or at least if it's a physio delivering the Pilates, you've you've got the medical background um, and the understanding of the the injury or, or the medical diagnosis whether it's osteoarthritis or inflammatory arthritis and how that can affect um, pain um, and how the body's kind of working. So you, you've got that in-depth understanding, which then allows you to better tailor to the individual based on like their current symptoms, whether they're in a, like a flare up or whether actually they're in a, a phase where they're managing things quite well and they're able to progress on with their exercises. It's more the, the, the underpinning background of the physio knowledge that then means that that I guess the Pilates is more bespoke and more effective to um, rehabilitation as opposed to maybe fitness Pilates. But like Pilates in a sense is one style of physiotherapy. Um, There can be, you can also uh, do your exercise through like maybe like gym work, um, whether that's a low impact class. Um, There's courses nationally as well that run Escape Pain. And that's an amazing resource as well for anybody suffering with um, like ongoing arthritis pain of their hips, knees, and even back now they've got a class, which is really good. Yeah, so it's, I agree. If, if Pilates is the style that you enjoy and that you like, then it's amazing. And having it led by a physiotherapist with that background and that knowledge is, is even better because they can guide you through and educate you on your symptoms as well. Um, and almost that like holistic self-management because the physio will have an understanding of like pain relief and um, like what to do at different stages of your condition. Um, but it's not just Pilates at the physio. That hopefully we'll get onto that as well. There's different styles of exercise that we can do. Um, it's just one that seems to work really, really well in, in the patient group of arthritis because it's low impact, it's controlled, it's progressive. You, you can regress exercise and, and build them up steadily. It, it suits the patient group of arthritis really well. That's why it's worth talking about today. But there's lots of ways that physio can exercise and treat a patient. So what sort of results can people kind of expect from, obviously, it's, it's, I know that's a tricky and it's a tricky one to answer because of how individuals everyone is going to be. But like, what type of results do you think people can expect from starting to add physiotherapy or Pilates into their routines? Yeah, that's a really good question. If we go maybe like, yeah, just just going through like what, what, what as a physio, the goals that I'm kind of working towards with the client, I'd always, firstly, you're always asking what, what that person who's come to you, 
wants to get out of the appointment. 99% is going to be to reduce pain, improve like confidence, improve strength, uh, and then self-manage, get back to whatever activity they, they want, they're struggling with. That's the patient goals. As a physio, I want to, well, there's five rules that we, that we always go through. It's, it's what's the diagnosis? Uh, so that's that education. Um, like you take your car into a mechanic, you, something you're struggling with something like you want to know what's wrong. Okay, so there's a diagnosis. Really important to get to the root cause. So you don't just want to treat the symptoms. You want to treat what that underlying kind of problem is. And then you want to know what you can do to improve it. And there will be things that you as a patient can do individually to help yourself manage. But there will also be things that, the, that a physio can help you to accelerate your recovery. So like we work, you can expect like a roadmap to recovery. When you come to see a physiotherapy, they will like work with you, tailored towards your goals and discuss like a, like a physiotherapy plan. On that, it might well include six to eight weeks of clinical Pilates, which is progressive, building up your strength. Uh, and we know that just by building up strength around the painful joint, for example, takes the pressure off the joint because the muscles are able to just like, you've got more capacity and you're able to absorb more like just the force through movement. So strengthening is a really key element. Your physio will definitely work with you to find exercises that don't irritate or flare up your pain, but really importantly, it'll get you stronger and then you build upon it. Uh, you'll learn about that, that, so we said like that holistic management about like pacing yourself. Often it's you rest because it because you've had a flare up, and then you go straight back into to whatever it is that you were doing. Whether that's it could be it could be like walking long distances, like with your family, or it could just be as simple as like going and, and doing a weekly shop. It, it, whatever the extreme is, but often when we see people, they they're all or nothing. They're either going all out doing everything mm. or they're resting completely because they've had a flare up and physio is like bridging the gap that's another thing you can expect we'll kind of work with you to to layer by layer increase the volume that you're doing and working with you to improve the strength so then you've got the, the tolerance in your muscles and joints to to be able to tolerate what you want to do pacing so we're working with you we're giving like advice on like how to better manage your pain Often just explaining what's going on gives confidence. That's, that's massive in empowerment. And then you, you feel like you can cope better. That alone is, is massive and not to be underestimated. So I think it's, it's a better understanding. It's a roadmap to recovery um, and working with you, a style of physio that, that, that kind of like you, that works for you, for that person, whether it's gym-based or whether it's in Pilates or whether it's a bit more just in the clinic, a little bit hands-on with some gentle exercises you can do at home like sat on the sofa or even in bed, just like there's, there's lots of hard exercises you can do. It's working with the person individually to find what works for them. So, I mean, we've already touched a little bit on this as well, but how can Pilates be tailored to people with arthritis? So like, you know, things like chair exercises or like versus standing versus mat work, because like we would say we've touched on it already, but like what kind of a la- changes can be made for people with arthritis to make it more suitable for them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, for patients that I have who are um, experiencing different sorts of arthritis in class, um, some people struggle to kneel on their knees. Um, So sometimes it's as simple as using pads under the knees or rolled up towels under the knees to make that um, a more tolerable position. If they're still unable to tolerate kneeling, for example, I might sit them on a gym ball or sit them on a chair, um, which often, you know, doesn't give any more disadvantage of of what we're doing with the exercise. We can just change the exercise to to work the same group of muscles um, that we would be anyway. Um, So that, you know, if someone's got a particularly sore joint on the day, so say say it's a shoulder or an elbow, um, we can bring the resistance down. We can reduce the range of motion that the person is uh, working through in the exercise really really simply or if it's too sore altogether we can just keep the exercises um, with the joint very close to the the body um, and use props like resistance bands or or small small weights for example to to work the muscles in such a small range that they're not irritable to the patient on that day 
Um, I haven't had any patients that aren't able to get onto the floor at all, but I did once do um, a seated a seated class for like a more elderly population, and there are chair based Pilates classes. Um, it, there will be some around. I'm not sure if they'll be in your local area, um, but there are often classes around. So if you really don't feel like you're able to get onto a mat or you're able to lie on your back, for example, um, it might be worth looking up chair exercise classes that are run by physiotherapists and um, whether they're pilates based or not that's always a really good option um, i think the other thing that's really good about clinical pilates uh, to tailor people with arthritis is that sometimes in normal pilates classes people worry about not being able to get into the positions quick enough or or not keep up with the exercises for example if they're like here we go, on we go on the floor, eight of these or 10 of these, and, and you're still getting on the floor uh, by the time the exercise is finished. I think this, if you were to go to a physio-led or a clinical Pilates class, there's always more time allocated to get people into the right position, make sure people are working the right muscles, make sure people are doing the correct technique you know i spend a lot of time working on the postures of the positions before we even move a limb um so you'll probably find that in other classes too um and that means that it can be slower paced and self-paced for as much or as little as the the client can manage on the day really um and because it's a smaller group there's less pressure to keep everyone on the same schedule if you like and if some people are, are working a bit quicker than others it doesn't matter at all um, and then often you know I have a little chat with my clients before the class or after the class just to check up that there hasn't been any recent flare-ups to make sure that they don't have any concerns or queries and then after the class if they say oh hello there that exercise I really, really liked. It gave me a lot of relief. I found it a really good level. And, um, you know, they can take that away, put that in their back pocket and practice that at home as well. So we can talk about more appropriate exercises that, that you can do at home because obviously we need to be doing a little bit more than once a week to keep up with our strengthening work. Definitely. Definitely. That does that does lead me very nicely onto my next question. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> so like, when it comes to like... Um... So like homework or when you give people a list of exercises that they could do after you've like sort of had an appointment with them, if people don't get on with them or they don't like them, what is it that you advise that they do? Because I know some people may not have the confidence to like just tell people like can't do them. So they just ignore it and then just don't do them, which I know is something that happens quite a bit, <laughs> unfortunately. That's a really good question. I think it is, it's our responsibility. It's part of our job as a physio to really work closely with that individual client, patient, to find a style that, that works for them. You can't just give the same approach for everyone because then there, there will be some things that work really, really well for someone and then it's the same thing for somebody else. They just maybe don't enjoy it or, or they just it's not something that they, that they see themselves doing long term. And then it's like it's lost the impact that it could have. So we individually tailor it our first appointment is is an hour initial assessment that's where we're, we're trying to like figure out what it is that your goals are and what it is that like that's going to help us with the rehab that we kind of prescribe because we're going to hopefully make it fit into your daily life with minimal kind of barriers that, that that's number one but if someone is really struggling then obviously we have to work with them to to either change the exercises if they're, if they're causing pain or, or, or like discomfort um, but adapts the style we with all of our um, clients we've got an app and on there there's a video and it's really it is really good because on there you can track your reps sets effort and also pain so that in a way you don't even have to like tell the physio in the consultation you could have just done that remotely um via the app at home so if, if maybe you felt a bit awkward telling the physio then you, you kind of the physio would already like know that without you telling them because they've seen like how you've got on with the exercises remotely um but i think i think it's 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 you don't always nail it the first time so i might be working with somebody and, and then actually a couple of sessions in i think they're really suited to pilates and and then they go flying with that so it's it's not being afraid to 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 maybe try different types of exercise that you put off straight away um we would always try and make it work for you so if you don't have access to a gym if you don't intend to really go to one and, and that's not really your thing, 
then us writing your gym program probably isn't going to be the best thing. We'll have to find maybe like exercises you can do at home uh, with the app that you can just do in, in your lounge or wherever it's like most comfortable. Some people love classes because it helps with like that community feel and they're with people kind of going through the same thing. So that's what we recommend. Yeah, physio is very individual. It's, but it, is, it is a big thing that what you've said, it's, it's hard to answer because it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's something that we come up with every day. We're constantly trying to... Um, adapt what we do i think the key thing is please please always tell us yeah. <laughs> or your physiotherapist because like you said mark the worst thing for a physiotherapist ever is when your patient comes back and says i tried what you asked me to do it really hurt it flared me up and i didn't do anything else for three weeks and because we don't know about it we can't help you. And there will be something, there will be something that is comfortable to do, even when you are in your sorest moments. And we know that because we see people post-operatively, you know, as a, as a whole physiotherapy profession, we see people who are in intensive care. We see people, you know, we've yeah. had experience working with people in severe, severe amounts of pain who can do something. So there will be something we can do with you to help your joint um, and, and to help your strength, even if it, it's the, the smallest exercises to begin with. But we can't help help anyone um, if we don't know. Yeah. So be honest. We'll never be upset. <laughs> we'll no, never be I mean, happy. It's our job as well. It's, we see it as a challenge. We've got to win you over. Yeah. So, <laughs> and find the thing that works for you. But they're, they're on that. There's one amazing study that I always think of. It's the two patient groups. Uh, the patient group was... Um, people with um, clinically diagnosed arthritis in their knees, so painful they couldn't even sit on a static bike because of the revolution and they didn't have the range of motion to, to comfortably go through it. So one group did no exercise or, very, or just a control set of exercises. The other group did that control set plus some cardiovascular like arm cycle ergometer. So they couldn't go on the, on the bike, but they could do it with their arms. They had so much better results in terms of reduced pain kind of like uh, improved fitness, well-being, quality of life, every measure was improved. And that wasn't even exercising, the painful joint, which was the knee. So there's always something, always something you can do. Um, so yeah, just yeah, just, just be honest with the physio. We'll work with you to find the thing that, that works for you. As you did mention NHS physios, most people will probably be referred by like their GP or something. So I guess this is a multi-tier question, really. How do you get a referral to a physiotherapist? I mean, does it have to be through your GP or do you have to contact them? Like, if you could talk a bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's a good question. It's very dependent on locality, location. Um, so down here in, in Portsmouth, for example, you can self-refer. If you're an NHS patient, which, which one is, you can self-refer direct to physiotherapy. Uh, just by searching online NHS self referral uh, physiotherapy and, and do that simple form and then you'll you'll have your appointment come through. Other option is you can go to see the GP and then the GP can refer you. But what they're trying to do is is almost make it more streamlined at least here in Portsmouth. So so they, if you know you need to see a physio, you can self refer. If you're not too sure and maybe you're talking about medication or something else, then definitely see your GP and then they can either advise you to self-refer or refer you directly. That's the NHS setting. Um, privately, it's, it's just a case of like um, Googling physiotherapy clinics near you and, and then making an appointment or, or like asking somebody who, who maybe has gone before for one that they recommend um, and, and doing your research that way. But you, you can definitely self-refer um, to physiotherapy, both privately and NHS. Yeah, and in recent times, you might end up speaking to a physiotherapist called a first contact practitioner. You didn't mention this to you. No, no, no. Um, so if you end up speaking to a first contact practitioner or an FCP um, at an NHS clinic or a GP clinic, uh, these are physiotherapists who are specialised and normally quite experienced, who are triaging over the phone, um, who will listen to your symptoms and then refer you into where you need to be so it's a first line of contact physiotherapists 
who will refer you to your GP or your physiotherapist um, locally, uh, depending on, on what the result of the triage is. So they can be very useful because it can be a very quick way of getting the correct service that you need. Um, and then one other thing, if you wanted to look at physiotherapists and you didn't know where to start, the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy website is very good. Um, and I think they have some details of, of physiotherapists and, and also the HCPC website, um, the Healthcare Professionals Council website. You can check that the physiotherapist mm. that you're seeing is chartered and registered um, just by looking up their name. So that's always a good a good thing to have under your belt. And, and you guys have registered associate practitioners as well so that's a good source that if anybody is not sure where to go I guess they could they could visit just our private section resources absolutely absolutely you, you've made that seem much more seamless than if I just randomly plugged our charity myself so thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you, we do have a great associated practitioner service which is, of course you guys are part of as well and um, yeah have a look at our website for that one and you can search by location as well so you can find out what's in your area as well there's a bit more information about what how, how we can help subsidize treatment for those as well if you remember so I mean, is there any um any last words of wisdom or any sort of like if you could give like an extra little bit of advice, anything like that you want to give before we sign off? Uh, last bit of advice: you don't have to grin and bear it. You might have been struggling for years, not see a way out. There's always something you can do. I think Helena said it. There's, there's always something you can do. It might not be what you've tried in the past. It might not be that style of exercise or or even that treatment that you that you that you tried. But there'll be something that you can do so I would encourage anybody who's struggling with pain or an injury or a long-term illness to, to see a physiotherapist and see how they can work together to improve their fitness improve their health so it, there's always something you can do the most important thing is to, is to stay as active as you possibly can Perfect. So um, if you'd like any more information sort of about some of the stuff you've talked about, and there's also some links on our website as well, for our Associated Practitioner Service that I mentioned, and also these guys as well. Our website address is www.arthritisaction.org.uk. And if you have any questions or would like to know anything a little bit more, we can point you in the direction of some other things. Please feel free to send us an email. You can send that to podcast at arthritisaction.org.uk. So thank you so much, both of you. That's been really interesting to hear. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thanks so much for having us. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.